Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now before I get started I just want to say to those of you who are subscribed to my second channel Classic Gaming in HD that I'm sorry for neglecting it a little bit but there will be some more videos on there very soon. For those of you who aren't subscribed well I'll leave a link down below in case you want to. Moving on to today's video and we're talking about one of AMD's cheapest APU options. An APU or Accelerated Processing Unit is AMD's name for a CPU with onboard Radeon HD graphics. The cheapest available is the Sempron 2650, but to be honest, for just a little more money you could get the A4 6300, a dual core 3.7 GHz processor that retails for about £25 or $35 and is a lot better than the Sempron. I've always liked AMD's APUs because they make for ideal components at the centre of a home theatre build or a super budget gaming setup. For example, if you opted for the A4 6300, a cheap FM2 motherboard and 4GB of DDR3, you would still have change from 100, and you could probably build a brand new system for under 200, maybe 150 if you bought used. Sure, you could probably find better used deals on other components and walk away with better hardware, but if it's a cheap and cheerful new build you want, then the A4 6300 might be right for you. But let's see. Before we talk about gaming, let's take a look at a couple of other results. For example, in Geekbench 4, our AMD A4 6300 returned a single core score of 1804 and a multi-core score of 2467. To put that into perspective, it's similar CPU-wise in performance to the Celeron G1840. When it came to rendering a 30 second 1080p 60fps gameplay video, the A4 6300 on Premiere Pro completed it in 1 minute 21 seconds, which isn't too bad considering the price of this thing and the fact that Premiere Pro was more than usable with the CPU and onboard graphics alone. So let's try out a couple of games using the integrated 8370D graphics which feature a base clock of 760 MHz and 128 shader processing units. Based on those specs I'd estimate that these graphics would edge out the discrete HD 5450 graphics card by a few percent. It's also worth remembering that all APUs benefit from faster memory, so we're using 8GB of 1600MHz DDR3, the maximum supported speed for this specific chip, although I believe the A6, A8 and A10 series do support faster speeds. Battlefield 3 first because Battlefield 4 and 1 aren't really playable at all and here with 1024x768 resolution with the medium preset which the game actually defaulted to we saw 27 FPS on average with single player. If playing online you could expect to drop to the lower 20s and turning things down to low would be best there to try and stick as close to 30 as possible. CS Go Now, this time at 720p, with all the settings turned down to low to see a return of 50 frames per second. Because we're recording externally today, there's no effect on frame rate, and so this is pretty much what you get. But it's definitely playable on this $35 APU and its older and less demanding titles that are really ideal for this thing to handle. So League of Legends next and we crank things up to full HD this time, albeit leaving the game on the lowest settings. Here we saw 55 FPS and even when the action started heating up, the frame rate stayed fairly stable, never dropping below 40. You could turn the resolution down if you wanted, but we've stuck to the theme of using the settings that the game defaulted to, which has actually worked out okay so far. Finally it's Dirt 3, back down at 720p here with the low settings and we saw 30fps on average. To be honest I'm fairly impressed with this APU because for the price of under £30 or $35 you get a decent chip that's perfect for uh, movie streaming and things like that but you can also handle a few games should you want to play them. Older titles and less demanding ones are definitely the ideal here and if it's just games like League of Legends or CSGO that you intend to play while sticking to a pretty strict budget the A4 6300 really isn't too bad. When buying new it would be impossible to find a CPU and discrete GPU for the same money and I think that this is quite appealing at this price point, even more so for basic users. 
So guys, thank you so much for watching this actually sensible review for once. Rather than comparing a graphics card to a potato, we've done a little bit more of a serious video today and I hope you guys enjoyed it and that it helps some of you out if you're considering building a new PC. So as always, if you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.